February 14, 2024, News Report 1. A report from the Norwegian intelligence agency indicates that Chinese espionage activities are widespread in Europe, posing a security threat. These spies not only act alone but also receive assistance from diplomats, tourist groups, individuals, and companies. Their activities aim to obtain political and industrial intelligence, primarily conducted online. The Norwegian intelligence agency warns that the West is facing a more dangerous security situation than in 2023 because China and Russia are challenging the current world order, attempting to weaken Western influence and overthrow the international order of democracy and freedom. Recent developments have seen increasing vigilance from countries worldwide against Chinese espionage activities and cyber attacks. The military network of the Netherlands was hacked in 2023, and the Philippine government stated that in January this year, Chinese hackers attacked the email network of the Philippine Department of Information and Communications Technology and the website of the National Coast Watch Center, even the personal website of the Philippine president was attacked. The U.S. government stated that they thwarted Chinese hackers' penetration activities against U.S. critical infrastructure in January. The German government pointed out that China is expanding its espionage activities in Germany, using Germany's economic dependence on China to exert political influence. The UK government also stated that Chinese spies are cultivating British officials in sensitive positions to obtain confidential information and expertise. News Report 2 Indonesia's current defense minister Subianto announced on social media that he has won the 2024 presidential election, despite the official results not yet being announced. Sample surveys show that Subianto received 60% of the vote, leading other candidates by over 30 percentage points. He is the son-in-law of former Indonesian President Suharto and this is his third presidential election, having lost to the current President Joko Widodo in the previous two. Subianto's victory means that Joko Widodo cannot be re-elected. He made his son a vice-presidential candidate and supported Subianto in the election. Critics believe that Joko Widodo is undermining democratic reform and attempting to achieve political heredity. Subianto positions himself as Joko Widodo's successor and says he will continue to push Joko Widodo's policies. This election is crucial for the influence of the U.S. and China in Indonesia. Joko Widodo's foreign policy is to avoid criticizing China or the U.S., nor to ally, maintaining a dangerous balance. This balance has led to increased Chinese investment and trade with Indonesia, and the U.S. has also strengthened its defense relationship with Indonesia. Subianto stated that he will continue to adhere to a neutral position, openly praising China and the U.S. He believes that China's importance to Southeast Asia cannot be ignored and describes China as a great civilization that has made many contributions to Indonesia's economic development. The new president will be inaugurated in October this year. News Report 3 Data released by the U.S. Department of Labor shows that the Consumer Price Index, CPI, in the United States in January was 3.1, higher than the expected 2.9. The market believes that this may lead to the Federal Reserve delaying interest rate cuts, leading to an increase in the U.S. dollar index. On February 14, the U.S. dollar index reached 104.96, hitting a new high in three months. The rise in the U.S. dollar index led to a decline in the offshore renminbi exchange rate. At 10.30 a.m. on February 14, the offshore renminbi exchange rate was 7.2260, an increase of 183 basis points from before. On February 9, the onshore renminbi closing price was 7.196, and the midpoint price was 7.1036. China's foreign exchange market will start on February 19. At the same time, the yen against the US dollar fell to 150.88, breaking below 150 for the first time since November 2020. In the past two years, the yen exchange rate has fallen by 23%. Japanese Vice Finance Minister Kanda Masato stated that the government is closely monitoring the yen's trend and is prepared to respond.
it is expected that the Japanese government may intervene in the market to stabilize the yen exchange rate. News Report 4 The Liberty Times reported that on February 14, the Taiwan Coast Guard pursued a Chinese speedboat fishing illegally in the waters near Kinmen, causing the speedboat to overturn, resulting in four crew members falling into the water, two of whom tragically died. The incident occurred after 1 p.m. on the same day when the Taiwan Coast Guard found a Chinese speedboat fishing in the waters about 1.2 nautical miles east of Beidin in Kinmen, violating territorial sovereignty. The Coast Guard dispatched a patrol boat to intercept and drive away the speedboat, but the speedboat refused to stop for inspection and maneuvered irregularly. The speedboat eventually overturned, and the Coast Guard rescued four crew members, but two of them died after being sent to the hospital. The Coast Guard has notified the relevant families through diplomatic channels. Navy officials stated that the Taiwan Coast Guard usually drives away or detains violating fishing boats, and incidents resulting in deaths are extremely rare. The report also mentioned that China has recently employed a gray operation, fishing or extracting sea sand in Taiwan's waters. News Report 5 A report released by Crane on February 14, 2024, indicates that as of the end of January, China has successively released the first batch of real estate white lists and conveyed them to commercial banks. The whitelist involves 3,218 real estate projects, and commercial banks have issued loans to 83 projects in 27 cities by the end of the month, totaling 178 billion yuan. However, this 178 billion yuan is only a drop in the bucket for the Chinese real estate market. Nomura Securities chief economist Lu Ting estimates that China may have 20 million unsold real estate projects, including 2 million that have been presold but not yet completed. Completing the construction of these 20 million houses will require 30 trillion yuan in funding. So far, the loans issued by banks only amount to 178 billion yuan, far from enough. The Ministry of Housing and Urban Rural Development held a real estate financing coordination meeting on January 26, requiring commercial banks to meet real estate financing needs as much as possible and intensify efforts on the white list, with projects as the financing objects. Currently, major banks are still cautious about loans for real estate projects, and there is no situation of flooding. Last year, 80 typical real estate companies added financing of 560 billion yuan, a year-on-year -year decrease of 28%. The first and second quarters of this year are the peak periods for real estate companies' debt maturity, and real estate companies face enormous pressure. The decline in sales and financing scale indicates that more real estate companies may face bankruptcy risks in the future. News Report 6 during this year's Spring Festival holiday, February 10 to 13, Hong Kong's top 10 real estate properties experienced a rare situation with no transactions. These properties include City Plaza, Lek Yuan Estate, Wampoa Garden, and Shatton City One, all of which are among the most popular properties among Hong Kong residents. Last year, during the five-day Spring Festival holiday, the top 10 properties in Hong Kong had a total of 18 transactions, but this year there were none. Statistics from Midland Realty show that this year's Spring Festival is the first time since 2010 that there have been no real estate transactions during the holiday period. Tony Young, vice chairman of Asia Pacific at Midland Realty, stated that the current outlook for the property market is uncertain, and some buyers are cautious as they wait for the end-of-month budget. He pointed out that the worst situation for the real estate market is no transactions because the market is not afraid of falling prices but rather of no deals. News Report 7 According to a report by Itzai, during the spring festival, many tourists traveled to Hainan but did not book return flights in advance. As a result, upon their return, they found that tickets were sold out, with only expensive tickets remaining, some costing over 10,000 yuan. As of February 14 to 16, tickets from Hainan to other major cities have been almost sold out, with only a few high-priced business class and first-class tickets remaining. 
Some netizens said that it costs only over 1,000 yuan to depart from Hainan, but over 10,000 yuan for the return trip. Therefore, it is important to book return flights and hotels in advance when traveling, as demand is usually concentrated during peak travel periods. This is an important travel habit. News Report 8 According to Reuters, on February 14, the Ukrainian intelligence agency deployed an unmanned boat to successfully sink a large Russian amphibious landing ship named Caesar Kunikov. Video footage from the scene showed a huge fireball erupting from the Caesar Kunikov after the Ukrainian unmanned boat launched a bomb. The Ukrainian intelligence agency stated that the Caesar Kunikov was located in the city of Arupka in Crimea at the time, and after the ship was destroyed, it sank into the Black Sea. Russia has not yet revealed whether there were casualties aboard the Caesar Kunikov, only stating that six Ukrainian drones were shot down over the Black Sea. The Caesar Kunikov is a warship of the Russian Black Sea Fleet, 112 meters long, capable of carrying 147 soldiers and 650 tons of cargo, with a range of 4,700 miles. This is another significant victory for Ukraine in recent times in sinking Russian warships. In addition, NATO Secretary General Stoltenberg stated on February 14 that 18 NATO member countries will reach military spending of 2% of their GDP this year. Stoltenberg reiterated that NATO allies will adhere to the commitment of collective defense. This is a response to former U.S. President Trump's statement that if NATO allies' military spending does not reach 2% of GDP, he will not provide defense assistance. This news has caused a stir. News Report 9 According to a report from the South Korean Joint Chiefs of Staff, North Korea launched several cruise missiles into the Eastern Sea from the coastal city of Wonsan at 9 a.m. on February 14. This is the fifth time North Korea has launched cruise missiles this year. On January 24, North Korea launched multiple Wasong 3-31 new strategic cruise missiles into the Western Sea near Pyongyang, which are said to be able to carry nuclear warheads. On January 28, North Korea again launched two Wasong 3-31 missiles near Sinpo City in South Hamjiang Province. On January 30, it launched Arrow 2 towards the western coast. And on February 2, North Korea conducted a power test of the super-large warhead of the cruise missile and test-fired a new anti-aircraft missile in the Western Sea. These cruise missiles are designed to be highly maneuverable like small aircraft during flight and are one of the increasingly developed weapons by North Korea, aimed at overwhelming missile defense systems and supplementing North Korea's large number of ballistic missiles launched from land and sea. Additionally, Senior U.S. officials responsible for North Korean Affairs Park stated in an interview on February 13 that China should condemn North Korea and Russia for deepening their cooperation, including North Korea supplying weapons to Russia. He believes that the North Korean issue is not only a problem for the United States but also for China, which has influence and responsibility to play a role. Some people may find the views of the U.S. officials naive and ridiculous. They believe that North Korea is an ally of China and Russia, so why would China condemn North Korea for supplying weapons to Russia? People may be confused by Park's remarks, not knowing whether he considers himself naive or whether he considers the American people naive. News Report 10 On February 13, the U.S. House of Representatives held a special election on Long Island, New York, where Democrat Tom Suozzi defeated Republican Matsi Pillip to win. This election was a by-election to fill the vacant seat in the House of Representatives due to the expulsion of Santos. Currently, in the House of Representatives, the Democrats have 212 seats, and the Republicans have 219 seats, with a slight lead for the Republicans. During voting, only three Republican members could tolerate defection. If three people defected, the bill would not pass. With the Republicans gaining this new seat, it becomes more difficult for them to control the House of Representatives. Swozy, 61, has served three terms as a congressman in Long Island. 
In 2022, he gave up his congressional seat after failing to run for governor. Additionally, on February 13, the U.S. House of Representatives impeached Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas by a vote of 214 in favor and 213 against. The impeachment was proposed by Republicans, who claimed that Mayorkas had failed to enforce border laws, leading to the failure of immigration control at the U.S.-Mexico border. It is expected that the Senate will not pass this impeachment, so Mayorkas will not be removed. In the first impeachment vote on February 6, the two-vote difference failed to pass. In the second round of voting on February 13, the Republicans finally gathered enough votes to submit this controversial case to President Biden. Biden stated that former President Trump pressured Republican lawmakers to obstruct Congress from passing border security legislation. Senate Democratic leader Chuck Schumer also stated that Trump would rather keep the border in chaos to help himself campaign.